When I worked fast food, there was an endless amount of shenanigans that I witnessed. I saw a lot, and I gotta be honest, I was involved in some too. Because this video is about how during one summer, a friend and I, we were cooking up some forbidden items in that kitchen. And best believe, we were smuggling and distributing that contraband for an entire summer, and they never suspected a thing. I won't lie, we got away with it. You know, some might call it forbidden culinary activities, but let me take it back to when this all started, which was over summer break from high school one year, and I had a friend, we'll call him Eddie, that worked there as well, and we asked the manager one day to make us the regular openers for the summer. And the manager agreed, he said he would schedule us to be the daily openers. And we wanted that shift because it was the most chill shift. You know, you get there, it's early, it's quiet, and you just do your thing, listen to some music, set up the restaurant before it opens, and then you get to leave in the afternoon before before the night rush comes through. The only downside to working that shift is obviously you gotta wake up early. And waking up early, for me at least, was already a struggle. I already procrastinate my sleep anyways. You know, I'll be sitting there at night, not even with anything specific to do, calculating in my head what's the least amount of sleep I can get and still be functional tomorrow. And whatever number I get, I cut it in half. So the shift was at 7 a.m. I can barely stay awake on the drive over, so I'm not taking no extra time to wake up 40 minutes early, cook a hot breakfast, go for a run, do whatever else you guys do at that hour of the day, yoga or something. I mean, I'll just take to sleep. So me and Eddie, we're getting there 7 a.m. every day, and we'd be there walking around, setting stuff up, but with no breakfast in our systems. You know, we haven't had time to eat anything yet. So we start thinking, hey, we literally work in an actual restaurant. What do they got here that we could have for breakfast? Well, nothing really, because they sold like three food items total at that restaurant. Every item on the menu was just different amounts and combinations of the same three things. So there wasn't really much for us to work with. So we start getting creative, right? We realize, hey, before the toast became toast, it was just bread. And it was the really soft, fluffy kind of bread, right? And then also, we had this batter mixture you were supposed to dip the chicken in, made of eggs and milk. And we said, hold up, what if we take the bread for the toast, dip it in the batter for the chicken, and throw it on the grill? That's French toast, right? Right there. Now normally the batter was disgusting with a bunch of raw chicken juice in there from all the chicken being dipped in it, but this was before we opened so it was still clean, hadn't been used yet, and let me tell you, best french toast I've tasted in my life. The bread was perfect for it. And then eventually we start refining the recipe because the version of batter we used for the chicken had way too much milk. So we started making our own separate batter with better proportion of eggs and milk. I feel like I'm on Master Chef or something over here. And then we realized we got eggs here too. They were liquid eggs, not actual eggs, but we found these tiny ovalish metal pans at the dish station. And so we started pouring the eggs in the little pan, throw that on the grill, and now we were making egg patties alongside the French toast. We'd get some syrup packets from the McDonald's, put some hot sauce on the eggs, and that was a good breakfast right there. Made your whole morning. A couple other people tried it, word starts to spread, and all of a sudden the entire restaurant staff is lined up. They want some French toast too. So we get in there, set up the restaurant, and then in the extra time before we opened, hey, we were running a Denny's at the back of that kitchen. Except, come on, you know this was way better than Denny's. Hey, I was just proud we were resourceful enough to figure out how to make a whole breakfast platter with such a small selection of food. Now, every single thing I just described was most definitely against company policy. But the thing with working in fast food when it comes to, I mean, what even is company policy? I mean, they do give you like, uh, they probably give you some 97 page handbook. Everyone knows that nobody's going to read it. They're like, all right, here are the rules. But in practice, all you actually had was different managers, all with their own list of what they cared about. Each manager would contradict the other ones. They're making up their own rules. I mean, there was no consistency when it came to what's allowed and what's not. For example, I remember they would always tell us how we're not allowed to bring vapes or vape pens to work. This is when Juul was big, right? Everybody's got a puff bar. And those were all banned. And then one day, you walk into the freezer to get some fries out or something, and there's manager Johnny trying to be all sneaky and hit his little pen in the freezer, treating the freezer like a hideout. Bro, I remember we had this one manager who, not often, but on occasion, would close the restaurant like an hour early just at random so we could go see his girl. I mean, hey, I didn't read that 97 page handbook, but I mean, that can't be company policy. So the people supposed to be enforcing the rules couldn't even get it straight. And then when it came to food, we had some managers that let you take whatever food you wanted whenever you wanted. And then we had another manager that fired a kid because he took a kid's meal for himself at the end of his shift. Bro took a kid's meal. He wasn't even being greedy or nothing. It was a kid's meal. But manager Doug saw it and manager Doug fired him. 
Meanwhile, the manager on duty the previous night, not even 12 hours ago, is letting people walk out their shift with full-on combos, drink cups, but not manager Doug. That man was a stickler when it came to taking home food. And if that was the punishment for a kid's meal, what's the punishment for cooking up grand slams? And you thought Doug was tripping over that kid's meal? I remember one time I tried to take a sauce cup home with me. Just one singular sauce cup. I think I had leftovers at home or something and wanted a sauce. And he saw me about to walk out with it. He saw it in my hand, stopped me, and told me I had to pay the 30 cents for the sauce cup at the registers. So I broke his ankles and walked out anyways. Psych! Nah, I wish. I mean, I gotta be honest. I forked over the 30 cents for it. And then on top of that, he also gave me my 50% employee discount. So I guess he made me pay the 15 cents for the sauce cup. But, you know, I understand. I thought it was petty. But at the end of the day, he's the manager. It was up to him. And then ironically, too, that guy that got fired for the kid's meal also previously got fired from In-N-Out, and it was also for stealing food. And then even more ironically, this guy that got fired from multiple places for stealing stuff, I believe that fella now works uh, actually at an accounting firm. So I don't know if he helps people steal money on their taxes now or what. That's wild. My boy went from stealing food on occasion to tax evasion. But anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is all of the managers had a different idea about what was okay and what wasn't. And the employees, the minimum wage employees, understood this better than anybody. You know, you had three managers, you had to memorize three lists of what each one cared about. If you wanted to walk out with that kid's meal, all you had to do was check and make sure Doug wasn't working that day. So we would have managers that would be cool with us chefing it up and some that wouldn't. And we would respect whatever manager was there. If they didn't want us to, we wouldn't. And if they were cool with it, we did. So, you know, there was a lot of blurry gray lines when it came to what was allowed and what wasn't. But one thing I'll tell you is those blurry gray lines got real clear real quick when they sent them inspectors through. Because this company had that, basically like a law enforcement division, but for their fast food rules. And these guys, you could be an assistant manager, general manager, cashier, or cook. Nobody was safe from these guys. They were called OPS or ops, but you might as well put a C in there because that's basically what they were. And their whole job was basically to make surprise visits to random restaurants around the country. They'd pull up to your restaurant at random random, all unannounced, and they would always come through all serious, right? It was always serious. They're wearing windbreakers and stuff. And they basically just watch you while you worked, examine every little detail of every little thing, write reports about everything you did wrong, and then give the report to corporate. And believe me, they would find ways of telling you you did something wrong you didn't even think possible. Like if they saw you wipe off a counter the wrong way or something, they'd hand you down some discipline for that. So these guys were basically professional snitches. But I don't even want to call them that. We had a job, they had a job, ultimately the same company was writing all of our checks. And I know a group of people like this is a normal thing for a business to have, to make sure things are going the way they want. I mean, you guys ever be in school and the evaluator walks in the room with the clipboard and all of a sudden, the teacher's like a new person. They're teaching with energy. They're all patient now, putting maximum effort into their teaching style. And that's the exact way it was, but with the managers when them inspectors came through. All of a sudden, the managers start caring about every little last rule. You did this wrong. That doesn't go there. He's talking about according to section four, line seven of the company handbook. You put three too many grains of salt on these fries. And then the inspectors leave. Nine seconds later, they're asking for some French toast. But hey, you know, the teachers got to look good on their report to their boss. Managers got to do the same. But, you know, it created this dynamic between everyone who worked at the restaurant, both the managers and the employees, where the only time they followed certain company policies, even health policies sometimes, was when the ops people were standing right behind them writing a report about it. And I don't know for sure, but I would assume that the managers are all getting bonuses from this as well, if they get good grades on their ops reports. And those ops visits, like I said, were supposed to be random, but a lot of the time the managers could figure out generally when the ops team was going to show up because they would talk to the managers at the other restaurants in the state to figure out their movements and when they were in town, what restaurant they were at last. It sounds funny, but the managers would talk to each other like that. It was a weird game that was played. I mean, let the managers find out the ops team is coming through and the switch up was crazy. Yeah, they're all about company policy now when a bonus is attached to it. But those ops guys, I'm telling you, they were serious about every little thing. I knew that if they found out that we were running basically an illegal French toast ring, I know they'd have a heart attack on the spot. I mean, this would be like felony level activity in their eyes. They'd probably use us as a case study for new ops officers or something. 
So we're there one morning, I'm there, my boy Eddie is there. We already finished setting up everything. Manager number one is trying to figure out if he's gonna close an hour early or not today. Manager number two is making the freezer smell like banana ice. And we're acting like we work at the damn IHOP. So everyone's doing their thing when our one manager calls everyone together for a meeting, you know, gathers everybody around. And he said, this is very important, very important. And he says that the ops guys are going to be coming sometime this week, but we don't know what day, what time or which shift. And then it got all quiet. It always got all serious whenever there was talk of ops coming through because everyone knew they were going to get all strict with the rules all of a sudden. No fooling around anymore. All right. They're dusting off cleaning checklists that haven't been used in ages. They're going to make somebody scrape the last three months of grease off the fryer since the last inspection the greaser yeah we forgot we even had that so they're having us get the restaurant in tip-top shape basically all everyone heard when he said the ops guys are going to show up this week was for the rest of the week we have to actually do things the way they think we're doing things all of the time but eddie and i look at each other and we already know this illegal french toast ain't stopping nah this is gonna keep coming grand slams for everybody ops is on patrol that's all right we'll deal with them when they get here but we knew they were coming sometime this week, according to the managers at least. So me and Eddie, we're being extra vigilant in the mornings, on the lookout for any ops people that might show up out the blue. One morning, we had some French toast on the grill, chefing up a banquet for the whole morning crew. And Eddie leaves out the back door to go take out the trash. And then like 90 seconds later, I see this man, Eddie, come flying back around the corner. And he's like, I saw him. He just pulled into the parking lot. He's got the ops uniform on and everything. They're coming in. We've got egg patties out, buckets of French toast batter lying around, syrup packets from McDonald's, illegal activities everywhere, right? Eddie slides me a trash can across the floor and we just start destroying evidence. Perfectly good French toast, gone. Egg patties, everything in the trash. I'm cleaning up like a crackhead. I see the ops guy walk past the registers. We know we got 15, 20 seconds max before he gets around the corner. But we're trying to keep calm. Eddie's trying to scrape all the French toast gunk off the grill because we can't leave that out in the open. I'm dumping out buckets of batter. And after finally getting rid of everything, we slide the trash can out of view by the back door. And right as we do that, he walks around the corner. He looks at us and goes, are you two the kitchen openers for today? I'm like, oh, how you doing today, Mr. Ops man? Yes, we are. And he goes, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I don't want to have to get us off to a bad start. And I thought he knew something was out of place. And he keeps talking. He goes, yeah, I walked in and I noticed the fridge door over there isn't latched. It's slightly cracked open. So uh, I hate to start us off this way, but I'm going to have to mark off points for that. That's a violation of the rules. But as far as the French toast, I don't think he suspected a thing. But it was as close a call as it could have been. Hey, the managers were about to lose their bonuses and everything. But we made sure to take the trash can to the dumpster shortly after, get rid of everything for good. And the rest of that day, ops people were on patrol, watching everybody. I was paranoid they were going to check the cameras or something, because they did do that sometimes too. But hey, luckily they didn't. They just kind of stood around and watched everyone. And at the end, they'd write up literally like an 80-page report, somehow find a long list of things people did wrong, even when they were specifically trying to do things the right way. I'd like to see one of these guys do an undercover sting operation. Pretend they're a new hire or something. Just walk in and observe everyone when they don't know you're an ops guy. Forget about 80 pages. That report would be 800 pages. But those ops guys, they were cool sometimes though. I don't know. Sometimes I felt they were a little too serious. So I tried to joke around with them a little, lighten things up. I'd be like, yeah, you know, sometimes when we get super busy, I'll just take the chicken out a couple minutes early. I mean, I heard salmonella isn't even that bad. Uh, you thought, you thought. But you know, I don't want to make it sound like they had no cleanliness over there. I mean, most of this you'll find in any fast food environment. I mean, if you could make a list of the places that treated your food the best, this place would probably be at the top of that list. So I don't know whether that's good or bad. I mean, some of these fast food places probably got roaches throwing a party in the back of their kitchens. But yeah, and shortly after, summer ended, high school started again, and I stopped working mornings. But I'll be honest with you, I still haven't had French toast that good since. Mm -hmm.